Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adi and today we have another special guest. We have a player who got top eight in the second victory road qualifier and then decided that wasn't good enough. So went back and got second place in the third victory road qualifier. We have Mike D'Angelo. Mike, how are you doing? I'm good. How's it going? Doing Thanks well. Thanks for having me on the channel. Of course. You know, we've it's we've talked about you a lot in, in all the other Ice House team reports and so it's it's about time that you you finally won some games and then got on here yourself. We already have the, uh, the emote ready. <laughs> so, yeah, if you see the thumbnail, that's that's uh, that's from like Tommy's first team report back in Players Cup one. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's great to have you. And for those who haven't met you, haven't heard of you, can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I've been playing Pokemon since red version it was the first game i played first video game i owned um when i was a little kid i had i was playing the game before i could even read um it took me an entire month before i learned how to save the game i would just <laughs> play till the batteries ran out and start again um started playing competitively in 2014 uh with vgc and didn't really even start competing seriously until i'd say 2018 2019 um that's when i started to that's when i could say i went to enough events to qualify for worlds i see right you know right after you stopped losing to me in 2017 right right you made me <laughs> take a year off yeah um <laughs> and so of course uh 20, 2020 and 2021 have been uh really interesting years but i know you've been playing players cup one players cup two uh, came really close to getting top 16 in, in the last Players Cup, but uh, this has been your format. You've been killing it, and uh, you got so you got top eight, the second victory road qualifier uh, with this colossal team, and then you got second place in the third qualifier with what looks like the same team. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the team building process? Sure. So it was pretty simple. Um, I thought that. Colossal was not getting respected enough in Series 8, despite its back-to-back -back Players' Cup finishes. I thought that it was still a very viable Pokemon. Um, and so the team-building process was really... I wanted to try it in a tournament. I thought that Colossal is especially good in uh, open team sheet best-of-three formats. So that makes sense why it's not doing well or you're not seeing it on ladder much. So I, I really just took the five main Pokemon that have been killing it in the Players' Cups, the Colossal, Dragapult, Urshifu, Incineroar, Rillaboom, and I threw a Zacian on it because I thought it was just the best restricted to pair, um, being that you're always going to be Dynamaxing the Colossal, so if you want a restricted that doesn't need to Dynamax in, Zacian's the perfect thing for that. Um, yeah, but the goal was to just lock in those six into the first tournament and see how it did, see how it felt and how it ran. Um, I ended up doing much better than I expected. Um, so I guess I could go into a little bit more of the specifics. Um, namely, I'd say the Dragapult is the thing that sticks out the most here. Um, the Choice Scarf set and... For attacks, mostly the Dragapults on this team tended to be support-based, but I felt like you couldn't afford to have a Pokemon just sitting there doing support in this format. That And, and that slot needed to be a Kyogre and a Sun matchup as well. So it, I had to squeeze a lot of things into one Pokemon. Um, Colossal obviously does not like to see Kyogres. It does not like to see Groudons very much. So I wanted a dedicated mode that I know knew could handle that. And I knew I could squeeze in with the same six Pokemon that I was already planning to bring. So the plan there was to use Choice Scarf to get ahead of the Sun teams, like the Venusaurs in Sun. And I could Surf and get Colossal set up before Venusaur could move. And then against rain teams, I could Dynamax it. And Kyogre teams generally have very few tools to kill Dragapult, I noticed. A lot of them were opting toward 
Thunder instead of Ice Beam, and some would, didn't even have an Ice move or a Dragon move or a Fairy move on the team. So I would use Dragapult to kind of outmuscle them there with combined with the uh, Zacian. Something I think that a lot of players are finding out now that Dragapult plus Zacian is a very powerful combination, um, especially into slower, thunderous Zacian teams. You just run right over them. <clears throat> yeah, we had a uh, Tarun on the channel uh, last week, and he was talking about how he loved Dragapult into both the Sun and Rain matchups as well. And so I've I've personally been testing Dragapult Station quite a bit. I, I cut uh, the the RVGC tournament last weekend with it, and it's it's really is a uh, a phenomenal p combination of Pokemon. Um, and you ha have so many other you have another way to exploit Dragapult maxing, which is Urshifu, which also has that same synergy. Um, that that's sort of the quintessential uh colossal core uh also with incineroar also on a lot of colossal teams uh did you ever think twice about putting the urshifu or incineroar on the team no um urshifu really i wanted a second way to proc the weakness policies on the coal so aqua jet urshifu was really good for that um i thought that urshifu synergized really well with dragapult because when I'm sitting there putting Max Phantasm boosts out, um, Surging Trikes really takes advantage of that. And even if they have something like a Reflect Up or if they're switching in their Intimidates, it doesn't matter. The other team, the team I used first had Rillaboom, but then Incineroar plus Amoongus, I felt was is just the best support core you could put on the team. So something, a lot of modes were just for this team you know, support Dragapult and Zacian in some matchups, and Incineroar Amoongus ended up feeling like the best things for that job. Yeah, uh, why did you end up switching from Rillaboom to Amoongus? So, at first, I thought, I think I was overcompensating for the Kyogre matchup at first. Um, I just assumed... Rillaboom had a good place on the team for that matchup specifically. And then once I started really getting into the groove with the team, I noticed I wasn't really needing it so much against Rain. And that Dragapult, Zacian, and Urshifu were really enough to just kind of run through it. And that in that fourth slot, I'd rather have a support. Yeah, that makes sense. It feels like uh, Zacian fills a lot of the same roles that Rillaboom did on the old dra on the old Colossal teams, not in terms of typing, but in terms of uh, offensive pressure, especially late game offensive pressure. Uh, and so you still, I, it sounds like you still wanted the uh, grass typing, but you wanted it to fill a very different role. Uh, about the specific moves, uh, Colossal very often runs Earth Power. Why did you opt for Solar Beam instead? I... Ended up not even not having an offensive grass move on the team, so I felt Solar Beam should really stay there. Um, Earth Power has a place in the mirror match, uh, but I really wasn't expecting to run into that very much. So, otherwise, I think I'd rather have, you know, a, a grass move for the rare Tapu Finis, um, some of the Groudons that you run into also uh, if they don't dynamax then solar the max overgrowth usually just takes them out so mm -hmm. it was a good tool to have on the team i found that i don't think i would have been clicking the max quake very often anyway sure yeah and uh then the urshifu is pretty standard you talked about the dragapult the incineroar has assurance on it instead of uh, another dark type move why did you choose to run that um, so this was the morning of the tournament. I realized I didn't have very much of a Calyrex Shadow matchup, and I noticed that you don't need any attack investment to one-shot the Calyrex with Assurance because the, the Life Orb chip from their own attack gets you up to the 120 base power, and it, does, it will one-shot Dynamax Calyrex. So my matchup just turned into position the team as best I could to get that one hit off and then try to clean up. I yeah. ended up, I ended up not facing any Calyrex shadows though. So I can't confirm if that actually works. <laughs> that, that makes sense. I know that when I was uh, testing 
the the three Pokemon on the right, Dragobolt and Cinerization. I know I noticed that uh, Incineroar can't run Darkest Lariat because it doesn't benefit from the max Phantasm drops the Dragobolt has. Uh, and so I went with Throat Chop. You went with uh, Assurance, which is kind of cool because it really benefits from if you click Max Phantasm Assurance, you are probably murdering everything yeah. that's sitting in front of you. Like Incineroar is no slouch uh, attacking wise, and and this team certainly seems like it needs the uh, it need, need a little bit more damage coming from that slot sometimes. Um, and then lastly, uh, can you tell me about the uh, what the EVs do and also why you chose to run Substitute? Sure, uh, the EVs. I wanted to be one point slower than the Dragapult when I Dynamax so that I'm getting the Phantasm drop and then immediately following it with the Behemoth Blade. Um, Sacred Sword, I realize, does not take advantage of the max Phantasm drops, but it's just so valuable against some matchups. Like I was finding Dialga, uh, a lot of the big steel types that just click Steel Spike three times clear body you can't get through them down so you, you want something that'll help um finish those games off and sacred sword is great for that <laughs> substitute i felt that a little was a little bit more valuable here than sword stance um, because of the pace of the games i was running um Zassian was rarely in the front so it wasn't really getting intimidated much it would it would come in the back after Colossal has done a move, and then I would be able to set up the substitute and maybe stall a couple extra turns of vocal lift damage. It, it just seemed really helpful, where Swords Dance, I wasn't really clicking much. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you you think that Swords Dance has energy with the Moongus, but really, Substitute, I found, is crazy with the Moongus because you can pollen and puff behind Substitute and regain all of that health. Uh, and then, yeah, like you said, that, that extra synergy with Colossal really makes it crazy. You can, I mean, Vocalith is obviously just such an insane ability to, to have uh, where you're doing a six damage per turn. Uh, and just to guarantee yourself like multiple turns of that, especially with the amount of pressure Zishin puts, they have to target it down. You just click substitute, they get nothing out of it. It's great. Um, so yeah, and then you you I know you made a couple changes to the team between the first and second tournament. Uh, what were the the changes that you made and why did you make them? Um, so we already talked about Rillaboom. I decided I just didn't really need it for the matchups. I thought I did. I originally had a safety goggles taunt in Cineroar, Um, but I, I realized I was never really taking advantage of safety goggles on it. Most of the time I would rather just kill the Amoongus instead of try to you know, worry about my Incineroar getting spored because they would just spore the other slot and it would just, you know, I, I could taunt it or I could just kill it with Flare Blitz. You know, why not do that? Mm -hmm. um, so that freed up the taunts, the taunt slot, which became Assurance. And Citrus Berry is just good. Um, and then the other change was um, I originally had Will-O-Wisp on the Dragapult because I... Uh, I I underestimated how often I would be Dynamaxing the Dragapult and how many matchups I would want to do that. Um, so Will-O-Wisp was the filler move that I had. Um, basically, I just wanted to make that thing as annoying as possible in Team Preview so they couldn't safely do anything in front of it. It's um, it terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was helping you, uh, you prep for your uh, top cut of the second Victory Road tournament, and it was I would just like have a station in front of it, think I would save for a second and just get Willow with it was it was yeah. really terrifying. When you're facing down Colossal Dragapult and thinking they could Dynamax either of those or just Willow Wisp me. You know, it, there's no safe play. And that but then I realized that there was never a good reason to click Willow Wisp and getting choice locked into it was just terrible in a terrible position to be in. So Fly ended up taking that spot and I clicked that a lot for the airstream boosts especially in the mirror match mm -hmm. it seems like you traded out some of the uh the volatility of the team for consistency and that really paid dividends in the uh, the second tournament that you entered um so uh do you want to tell us about some of the uh the common game plans that you had sure so 
the big one and probably the big reason I even decided to lock this team in was the lapdog uh, matchup, Lapras, Zacian, Thunderous, Dragapult, um, any combination, Landorus. Uh, that core, I felt, was really weak into the Colossal plus uh, Choice Scarf Dragapult. If they're slower, Zacian, then really I have all of the options of the team in front of me. I could just Dynamax the Dragapult and Airstream with Zacian and run right over them. If they're faster, Zacian, then the Colossal Dragapult combo still does incredible work to them. Um, basically, the only safe lead that that team has is the Landorus. And, and the great thing about this team is that you can lead that Colossal Dragapult and you don't have to Dynamax the Colossal, but they always have to respect it. So a lot of times my game plan is just Surf Heat Wave. Sometimes they play scared, protect things they shouldn't, and now you have both. You have Colossal still in the field. You could Dynamax that if you want. If they kill it, you just bring in Zacian and then Dynamax the Dragapult. You know, so you, you always have a lot of plays available, um, whereas that team has to do a lot of linear game plan to counterplay you. So basically, yeah, it was if if they lead anything except for Landorus and like a Moongus, you just run through them. Yeah, and uh you talked a little bit about the uh the rain matchup and how important Dragapult was there. Uh how did you approach playing against Sun teams? <clears throat> so Sun was very tricky. I felt that on ladder it was like 50-50 matchup, but with open team sheets, it was much simpler. You reduced your options quite a bit. Um, if they had no weather ball or sometimes they dropped sleep powder for protect, um, that changes a lot of the the options that they have. If they, don't, if they dropped earth power, then Colossal is incredibly safe into it because um, you could really just worry about the crowd on and then Colossal wins the matchup from there. Um, so sometimes in that matchup, you end up Dynamaxing the Dragapult. It's, you could really do either mode into Sun, depending on what their, what their counterplay looks like. Um, I Sometimes I would just max Geyser with the Dragapult to get rain up for Urshifu to just start clicking Surging Strikes, which does a lot more into the crowd on in rain. Um, so you, you have a lot of flexibility on the, with the team into Sun. That uh, that was really what got me through it. Yeah, makes sense. And then, what would you say the uh, the toughest matchup for this team is? I think it's Calyrex Shadow. Still, I I never felt like I really had a comfortable game plan into it. I never really played much many of them on ladder, none of them in the best of three tournaments. So if there's a weakness to the team and if there's something I think I could probably iron out a little better, it would be that. Mostly yeah. the, the team that won the Victory Road Challenge 2, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, that one with the redirection and the tailwind. Because when they have both of those options, you're it's really lead roulette where you don't you can't really lead either coal mode safely or they'll just get faster than you or redirect your aqua jet. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe I'll try to come up with a way to avoid situations like that. Yeah, that makes sense. And so uh, can you tell me about one or two games that were very memorable for you? Yeah. Um, I think my top four set against Yuki was probably – one of the more interesting games I played. It was, so his team has, I looked at it on paper, just looking at the six Pokemon before I had access to the team sheet. And I was like, oh, this is free. And then when I actually opened it up, I was like, oh, it's Life Orb Lapras. And that changes a lot of the game plans that Cole had. Um, normally, I would think that I, normally against like Lapras, Amoongus, I do Surf and a Max Flare. 
And when you put max flare up, Colossal lives the max geyser because you're in the sun. So that gets you another turn. Um, then you could click Vocalith or Max Guard and then click Vocalith. The goal is to just put the rocks up as late into their Dynamax as you can so that you get more turns of 1 6th chip damage instead of 1 12th chip damage on their Dynamax form. Um, and that's, that's a good way to whittle through some of their bulkier Pokemon when they go with that mode. But he had Life Orb, Lapras. Um, I played game one just assuming it was timid. I, w I just wanted to figure that out. Um, I knew the damage calculator was on my side. It, I never really confirmed because it's like a 116th roll to kill if it's timid. Um, but game one, turn one, I just lost my Colt for nothing and got ran over from there. So um, game two, I adapted by going with the Dragapult mode instead, and which is always tougher in that matchup. If you leave Cole behind, it's more of a grind, but it's doable. It's it's pretty much essentially a mirror match at that point because you're doing Zacian, Incin, Amoongus, Dragapult into their same thing. I think I brought Urshifu that game um, over maybe the Amoongus. And then game three, I figured he's going to switch it up because I, I I felt like I won very comfortably game two. And with this team, you could always kind of call them out and say, you know, you you beat Cole term game one. You lost to the Dragapult mode game two. I'm going to go Cole again game three, and you're going to switch up the lead that worked. And it, and it did. He led the Lapras Incineroar. I took the Incineroar out turn one because that was really the thing that bothered me when I wanted to go with Zacian. And then, and then that was able to clean up for me. I felt like you were playing the player at that point instead of the team. Yeah, but that's like that's part of why Colossal is so scary, is it's such a centralizing Pokemon. You have to give it the respect it deserves, because if you don't, uh, it will run over your team. And uh, that just restricts your lead so much and lets other Pokemon like Zacian that are also incredibly strong do their thing. Um, and so I know that Yuki, I believe Yuki streamed this tournament. And so you probably can find the game on his uh, stream, which will be linked down in the description if the VODs are available. Uh, definitely worth a watch if you want to see. Uh, well, it sounds like a, a very exciting match. Um, but yeah, I got I to gotta ask one more question. And that is, uh, is Colossal winning Players Cup 3? I I hope not. I think if, if, if people actually prepare for Colossal this time, because I was able to get results with it before Players Cup, I, I think I won. I think that was a victory for me. Okay. Because yeah. I mean, it always seems to be the same where people just assume Colossal fell off the ladder. It's not on anyone's radar. And then it just shows up and sweeps Players Cup. Um, I hope that doesn't happen again. It could. It very well could. It's an incredible team. <laughs> yeah. You know? I mean, we see it down in uh, sixth place as well in this tournament, uh, the, the variant, uh, similar variant of the team. I know that it cut the RVGC tour. Uh, I think it had two top cuts in that tournament as well. It's starting to pop up. Players' Cup is right around the corner. Yeah, it, it, it's coming. But Gotta... I'll say that the team that beat me in the finals was a very difficult matchup. Um, I guess that's another one we could talk about. The I actually played him, Yosuke, in Swiss uh, round three, and I beat him the first game because he led into Colossal, and I brought. Dragapult, Zacian, and had no problem there. Then he got smart and he realized that the Venusaur, I think he, I want to say he Dynamaxed the Kyogre game one. Uh, I don't exactly remember, but games two and three of that set, he realized that the Venusaur just ran through my team, especially if I called the lead a little bit wrong. Um, it had Weather Ball and both Rain and Sun. So he was able to one-shot every single thing on my team 
with that Venusaur, except the Dragapult. And then he had Ice Beam Kyogre, Ice Beam, Porygon 2, and a Dark Urshifu. So he, he figured out the matchup very quickly. And I felt like I, there was really nothing I could do besides hard calling out his read, his lead. And then the final set was 2-0. And I felt completely overwhelmed there. So there is counterplay to Cole in this meta. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming on and talking about your team. Uh, as per usual, the uh, the paste is in the description down below and the rental code is on screen. Uh, if you want to follow Mike on Twitter, he is, his Twitter will also be in the description down below. Uh, and Mike, do you have any final words or shout outs you want to give? I guess I'd like to give shout outs to all my friends who helped me prepare for the tournament. You, uh, one of them, so hype, Tommy DeRosa, um, the ice house gang. Thank you guys. Yeah, of course. Thank, thank you for putting us, putting us on the map once again, really, really incredible run back to back weeks. It's a, crazy performance and, and really putting Cole showing everyone that you got to maybe respect Colossal on your players cup three team. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, until next time, we'll see you all later.